On today's Baker Mashup, part two of our DIY Core XY 3D printer build. So in today's Maker Mashup is part two of our DIY Core XY 3D printer build. And from our first video, you know that we assembled the frame and this one is going to focus on motion control system. Now we're gonna be installing today a lot of the linear guides. We're gonna be installing the stepper motors. We're also gonna be installing the lead screws for the Z axis, all part of today's video. So today when we install the linear rails, I'm not going to go into the details of how to clean up a linear rail or to oil one or to get it really prepared for the 3D printer. I feel like there's a lot of really good videos out on YouTube that already represent how you should prepare a linear rail if you feel that your linear rail isn't moving smooth enough. Now, I could say that in my experience, I've only run into one linear rail where it didn't move smooth enough that a little three-in-one oil didn't clean it up. But if you feel like the ones that you purchased are not working well, I definitely suggest you go out and look on YouTube for ones on how to clean it up. It is a bit of a chore, so that's why we're not gonna be covering it in the video today. Now, I do wanna take a minute to talk about something regarding the linear rails. Now, most linear rails that you're gonna purchase may come with these little stops. This is just a little red piece of plastic, and there's one on this side as well. And it just prevents the carriage block here from going off the end. So some of these are coming now from Amazon and other vendors without those little red stops in place. Now I've put the zip tie here, so that way mine doesn't fall off. If they come off, it's not the end of the world. You're gonna be picking up a lot of little BBs and putting them back into uh, the block and it is very time consuming. So if you're not gonna clean this up and like this one, it's working just fine, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you at least put some zip ties on the end. Now in the video today, I'm gonna to be using these little clips and I'll have a link to them in the description. What they are, are just little clips that plug into the rail here. And what it does is the same thing. It prevents the carriage from sliding off the end. Where these are a little bit more helpful, and you'll see in the video today, is as I'm constructing the printer, I will have these in place to help put things together with the bed and making sure that everything's all aligned before we pull these off. It's very, very helpful. It's not required and it's not in the standard uh, bill of materials or in the uh, models for the printer parts. It is a separate model altogether. Like I said, I'll link that. I didn't create this, just very brilliant person who did and very handy for working on a 3D printer with linear rails. So just wanted to cover that real quick as we start this construction. You'll find that printing those out beforehand will aid uh, putting this together and kind of end some of the frustration that you'll have in trying to get things lined up. Now, if you're not already a subscriber, I suggest that you click subscribe and click that bell so you don't miss any notifications on our upcoming build videos. And if you need help with this, we have a channel Discord that you can go in there and it's a big community of makers and ask questions related to the printer. We've got a whole channel dedicated to the X301 portion of our Discord so you can ask questions about this build if you're building it yourself at home. So today we'll go ahead and get all of our linear motion in place. And then in the next video series, we'll start to work on things like getting the carriage installed and the electronics. So with all that said, Let's get to work. So for day two of our build, we're gonna be working on a lot of the linear rails and installing all of them today. We're gonna to work on the XY ones, the ones for the carriage, and also the Z axis. Then we're also gonna install the Z stepper and lead screws. And then along with that, we're gonna install the bed frame and mounts and the heat bed as well. And then we'll wrap everything up by installing the stepper motors for the X and Y axis. To install the linear rails, you're gonna to wanna to preload everything with at least four of the M3 screws and the T-nuts for them equally spaced apart. Installation of the linear rails is really easy. All you wanna do is make sure the nuts line up to the channel and make sure the linear rail is all the way to the back portion of the 3D printer here. So once you've got that lined up, you just drop them in place 
and then you're going to want to twist each one of the screws to tighten up the T-nuts. Now I've used four screws here. However, if you feel like you want to use more screws, you're more than welcome to. I think four was sufficient for the build. Once you have the right side completed, then you're going to want to do the same thing for the left side. And we'll be doing this the same way throughout the rest of today's build. The carriage linear rail is pretty straightforward as well. You're going to use two of the 3D printed parts for the carriage. And you'll notice that there is a side that has a hole for a nut. And then the other side is where the screw inserts. You want the nut side to be facing towards the back. And that's how you determine which one goes on the left and which one goes on the right. Once you've got them ready, you're going to want to go ahead and push them into the block and you want to do that on both sides. To install this onto the other two rails, you're just going to want to gently place them over the carriage blocks here. They'll fit on pretty easily. It just takes a little wiggling to make sure that you've got both sides of the carriage lined up with each other. Now you want to secure the 3D print to the carriage blocks by using some of the M3 8 millimeter socket head screws. Now it's time to move on to the Z axis. Again, we're going to start with our linear rail and this aligns exactly with the length of the 2040 extrusion. So you'll put it to the top or the bottom of the 2040 extrusion and then you're just going to go ahead and tighten these up. You'll also notice that I'm using one of those retainer clips that I talked about earlier in the video. These are very important to have something retaining this carriage block so it doesn't fall off the end of the linear rail into the bottom electronics enclosure. Now we have to prep the stepper motor and the bottom mount for the stepper. I installed the M5 eight millimeter screws and nut for attaching this to the extrusion. And then what we're also going to do is install the stepper. And you'll notice here that the back of the stepper or where you would normally have stepper wires is pointing inward. This piece fits flush up against the 2080 extrusion. So you need to install the stepper before we go ahead and proceed to the next step. Once we have the stepper all ready to go, you're going to want to install this on the second row of the 2080 extrusion. You see there that we've got one row that's open. You're going to want to put that just below that first row, and then you're just going to tighten everything up. You want to have the shaft of the stepper near the center of the linear rail going upward, but we'll actually adjust this once we drop the screw into place. Now we need to prepare the Z carriage that holds the bed. Now to do this, we're going to take the brass nut off of the lead screw and we're going to place it into the 3D print. It will be a tight fit. And then once we've got that in there, we're going to want to go ahead and drop some of the M3 eight millimeter socket head screws in here to hold the nut in place. After we've got this complete, we're going to drop some M5 8 mm socket head screws in here. And then what we're going to do is attach a nut on there, and that will be used to attach the bed frame. Take the carriage and you're going to attach it to the linear rail with the M3 8 mm socket head screws. Now make sure that you don't over tighten these because these are going into the linear rail carriage and you don't want to damage that at all. Now you're going to want to put the shaft coupler on top of the stepper motor shaft and make sure it's down as far as it can go. And then you want to tighten this, but don't over tighten it so much that you deform the coupler. Now you're going to go ahead and insert the lead screw. You'll have to manually turn this all the way until it meets up with the coupler. Now to make sure that it inserts all the way into the coupler, lift up on the carriage and turn the lead screw a little bit more. When you insert the lead screw into the coupler, it needs to go to the bottom of the coupler and then be tightened down. 
Now you're going to want to go ahead and make your final adjustments to make sure that the stepper motor and the lead screw is pointing straight up and down. It's key to run this up and down a little bit to make sure that you don't run into any binding of the lead screw. It should move smoothly. If it binds up anywhere, it's out of alignment and you'll need to adjust it. Make sure that bearing and lead screw turns nice and smooth. Now let's work on assembling the bed. You can see here I've already preloaded the 3D printed parts with the M5 screws and their respective T-nuts. And I'm just going to slide this in and tighten everything up. Now it is about 110 millimeters on each side. Uh, you can measure this either before or after. I went ahead just for the sake of doing this video and put them in roughly the middle and then went back and measured it afterwards. Once you have the two sides put together, next part is to put the crossbar in. Same thing, this slides right in here. And then you're going to go ahead and use those M5 nuts to tighten everything up. Once this is all done, let's go put this on the printer. You need to be patient putting this part in. It takes a little wiggling and fiddling to go ahead and get this in exactly. There's very little tolerance. Make sure that the crossbar is completely against the two rails that you're putting in there. So you're going to have to wiggle this in and then once you get it in there, it may even seem like it's fitting extra tight or squeak as you're putting it in there. And once you get that in there all the way and centered, then you're going to want to go ahead and tighten up the side nuts. If you turn the lead screws, everything should move up and down just fine. Just remember not to force everything and just wiggle it into place. Now we're going to go ahead and put the bed mounts on. You're going to need two M5 screws and their respective T-nuts. And then these are going to just slip onto the ends of the frame extrusion here. It's going to be a tight fit so that way things don't move around. Once you get those all in place, the next step there is to tighten them up for all four of them. And then we can move on. If you're building your build with NeoPixels, the two in the front will have these large risers. And that's where the NeoPixels will be stored later on. Now we're going to go ahead and take our heat bed and we're just going to lay it on top of the frame here. Now we're going to go ahead and take one of these silicone mounts and they fit right into the bed mount here and you just push that inside. Now we're going to go ahead and take a 40 millimeter M3 pan head so it recesses into the bed, a uh, pan head screw, and then we're just going to use a T-nut on the bottom. You can use an M3 thumb screw or an adjustment wheel here if you don't want to use the T-nut. I use the T-nut because it's easy to grab onto with my thumbs. And then I just use a bit driver to adjust the bed. The last step today is going to be to get our steppers installed. First thing we're going to do is use an M5 screw. And this one's about 20 millimeters long. And we're going to go ahead and put in an M5 nut as well. This is going to be the tensioner for our belt system. Once we have the tensioner in place, we're going to go ahead and mount the stepper motor. And all we have to do here is use an M3 screw, and it's an 8 millimeter as well. And we're using an M3 washer. And you just want to tighten up all four screws loosely. You still want to be able to move the stepper back and forth, and we'll tighten it up later on when we put the belts on. Okay, so today was a big day for the build. We got the motion control system in place and the print beds in place, looking more and more like a 3D printer every single day. Our upcoming videos are gonna focus on the carriage, the electronics, and the belts as well. So that's gonna bring about the end of today's video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you mash that like button and don't forget to share and subscribe and click that bell so you don't miss notifications of when we release the next video in the series. So with all that said, I'm going to say thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.